While Bishop Brennan's installation is fast approaching, his journey here to Brooklyn was not something that happened overnight. The entire process of naming a new bishop can take months, even years. It all starts right in the local diocese and ends with a decision at the Vatican. We spoke with those in the know to find out what happens in between. One does not become a bishop, one is chosen a bishop. Auxiliary Bishop Emeritus of Brooklyn, Octavio Cisneros, has been at the receiving end of a similar process and was part of the process in choosing Brooklyn's newest bishop. It's not a lot uh, of uh, steps, but see, it involves a lot of people. It starts with a meeting of the bishops in an ecclesiastical province. New York's eight dioceses make up the Empire State's province. Each bishop in a province can nominate someone. And why are you chosen? Because you're doing that which you were meant to do as a priest. Be a good priest. Do what you were ordained to do and do it with love, do it with freedom, do it with a fidelity to the church and to the diocese and to the people you're administering. The bishops take a vote and send the top names to the apostolic nuncio, Christophe Pierre. This is the part of the process where a lot of the research is done. The nuncio gets information about the diocese from the current bishop. He also contacts priests, even lay people, to find out more about a nominee. He then narrows the list down to three, which is called the Turna, and sends it to the USCCB for input then to Rome, to the Congregation of Bishops at the Vatican. Bishops and cardinals from around the world meet to vote on the candidates and put them in order of preference. They look at the slots that are available and they say, well, it's almost like a chess game, you know, who fits where? Who's got the talents that would be best used, uh, whether in the, in the state or outside the province? Former editor of the tablet, Ed Wilkinson, says the congregation does its due diligence. They want to pick the right person. They want to, they want to find the person who has the, uh, the right talents for the, the right resources for a particular diocese. The names of the top three candidates are presented to the Pope, who makes the final decision. It's a Holy Father. He may like all three names, he may like none of the names. He may add another name. Whoever the Pope chooses is notified by the nuncio and asked if he will accept the appointment. Once accepted, an announcement is made, an ordination or installation is scheduled, and the excitement begins. Oh, it's an exciting time. It's always exciting. And then when you, you get the new bishop and you want to get to to learn more about him and you see him in action and you see his new style, it's, it's going to be a very exciting time. It certainly is an exciting time in the diocese. And while there are distinctions between the appointment of a priest as a bishop and a bishop's transfer to another diocese, the USCCB says the basic outlines of the process remain the same. Thank you for watching Currents News on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell. You'll get updates about all of our newest content. And if you see something you like, click the like button and then share it with a friend. I'm Christine Persichetti and we are putting your faith in the news.